Hey everyone, this is Ed Brzee with Boomer Tech Adventures. This morning we're going to take a look at iPhone basics. In this Zoom presentation during the cabin fever, fever reliever in February 2001. Jill, Chris, do you want to go ahead and get started with some of the physical characteristics and then the swipes and taps and gestures and all of that? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. So, um, so I'm going to be demonstrating a few of the things on the um, on my iPhone 12, um, but let me first start off with um, a, a key piece of advice that that uh, I like to give people. As soon as you get a device, if it doesn't have a case, make sure you get it into a case as soon as possible, uh, because um, most phones and Apple phones in particular, they like to extend that glass right to the edge, which means if you drop this or bump this, it's very easy to crack the glass. I don't know if any of you have, have had that happen to you in the past. I, can I tell you that I got it, <laughs> I got my new phone and my granddaughter was pushing me actually all the grandchildren saying you've got to have a case got to have a case i've never had a case guess what i dropped it and i have a little crack down here yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, my granddaughter we, we went and bought a case but okay. anyway, yes you need a case all right. yeah and, and 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 you know part of it is because they're so shiny <laughs> and so shiny means slippery so um so the case that i use because um, I pretty much do everything on my phone. Um, this is one of those wallet cases. Uh -huh. right. And uh, so it has, you know, I mean, so I've got a couple credit cards. I've got my insurance card in there. Um, and I can slip in a few pieces of actual money as well. <laughs> All right. And, uh, you know, depending on when my check comes in, you know, there might be a George Washington on the bills, or they might be a Jackson. No Ben's though. <sighs> anyway, so um, before I so before I go any further, I am going to put this into the case just to set a good example. And um, I'm always reminded of doing this because uh, my wife bought a new case, and as she was switching them over, she dropped her phone and cracked the case. Oh no! As she was doing that. So if you're going to change, if you're going to get a new case, like sit on the couch or, or, or stand over the rug or something like that as you're doing that. Okay. So that's, that's like the first introduction is like, okay, put that into a case. Um, and if, if you are uh, at the, uh, if you, if you go to the, um, you know, the, the store, uh, usually they'll, um, in most cases, there's like a 20% off on cases and, and other things. All right. So uh, turning turning this these guys on, you guys probably know this. I'm going to go really quickly so we can get to the other stuff. But um, on most of the phones that you, you have, as far as I know, your on-off switch is over on the right-hand side near the top. And uh, if your phone is off, what you'll do is just press that and hold it, and the apple will will show up, the nice uh, glowing apple, and you can just uh, release that, and it will power up, and then you'll get a slider, and you'll just slide that on, and you'll be able to uh, to power that on, and you can power it off the same way as you press and hold it until you get a slider, and then you'll power it off. And uh, just really quickly, powering it off and just letting it go to sleep are two different things. When you power it off by using the slider, what you're actually doing is you're doing what's called a soft reset. And if your phone's not acting the right way, if it's a little, you know, jumpy or it isn't doing what it's supposed to do, and you're, and you're, you're supposed to do a soft reset by just turning it off completely, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you unplug something because it's not acting right and it resets everything. So, and it's good to do that periodically, you know, like depending on how often you use it, maybe like 
you know, once a month or something like that. Just turn it off completely and then turn it back on, on off. Um, could, I ask, could I ask you, yeah. I never, I, yeah. I never turn it off. I just, I just push my finger on it and it comes on. Yeah, that's, that's, it's in sleep mode there. Yeah, is that okay? It's okay. It, it doesn't hurt anything. Okay. Um, um, if you were like, and this never happens, but if you were ever going to not use it for a long period of time, you would want to shut it off because in the sleep mode, it still uses up the battery. Okay. It's still kind of doing things in the background. It's kind of like if you're on a laptop, right? You know, your laptop goes to sleep. It's just like that. It's still kind of awake and things are happening. Um, it's not a bad thing, but every once in a while, it's just good to reset it. And what happens is, as you use any electronic device, little things go wrong constantly. But those little things don't actually hurt. Um, they, they don't actually hurt anything, but they do um, gradually degrade the uh, processing um, in your in your device but by turning it off completely and restarting it you'll do that and you don't lose anything um you know, well, I, just, still, I just not turned, still, i just yeah. tried to turn it off you know like the the big turn off and holding it so now yeah. what it says slide slide to power off but it's not sliding and powering off what did i do wrong oh um, okay it, well now it's yep, it, enter pass so I guess I didn't get it. I didn't hold it long enough, maybe. Yeah. So Jill is demonstrating it right there. Um, up a little higher, Jill. There you go. What, what right. do you and then see the see the red slider? See what Jill is holding up? Yeah, well, I had a red never mind. I had a red slider and it when it anyway. I don't think I ever turned it off. So you just have to okay. hold it for a long time, right? Yeah. yeah. Turn it off. Yep. Yeah. And, 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 and Nina, it's a slide across. You're not tapping it or anything else. You actually put your finger on it and pull it across. Yeah. Yeah, but I, but now to turn it off, I do on the right hand side. I push that, that thing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Push the button. The, thing, the button. <laughs> not to push the button. Yo, and I you're hold. muted. No, oh, no. There we go. I'm not. No, I'm not muted. Welcome back, I, Jill. I, I push okay. the button. I okay, but button. on my on my phone, my ten, I have to push the on off button and the up volume button to turn it totally off. Interesting. Okay. What I have oh. to know though is once I see this slider, I need to take my fingers off because if not, the emergency SOS will go out and I'll get a nine one one call. Well, I don't have that. I don't have that. Okay, but so if it's not working with just the um, on off button, you might try the on off and the up volume at the same time. Right. Okay. So, so Jill, did... yours is a 10? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So with the 12, all I do is one hold and I hold it. Whoops. Wait a minute. Come on. That's funny. I get uh, Siri. She's laughing at me. <laughs> All right. I can't get so, the thing to go on again. So to go on, I just push on the right hand yeah, side. Push and, push and hold it. Push and hold it. And then I'm supposed yeah. to get a little apple or something, right? Right. Yeah. The apple comes up and then let go and then it'll come back by itself. Okay. I'm fine. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's oh, right. no. That's, yeah. We, we okay. want people to try things out. That's, yeah. that's how we, yeah. we learn. Okay, so I'm going to switch to the other side of the uh, phone right now. All right. Um, so on the other side, on the left hand side, there are three buttons or, or, or well, one's a switch, two are buttons. So the two lower buttons are your volume buttons. So the top, the top one is volume up. And the bottom one is volume down. So you can just kind of press those and you'll get, um, at least on my machine, I get a little volume bar 
on the side of my uh, on the side of my screen. If I push the lower one, it indicates that the volume is going down. I push the upper one, the volume is going up. All right. Right above those two volume buttons, there's a switch. So it's not a button that you press. It's a little button or a switch that you move. If you're looking at it, you, you can move it left or right. And as you move it to the, um, to the left, as I'm looking sideways at it, uh, you'll see that a little, uh, it shows orange gets shown. And if that orange is showing, what that tells you is that your phone has been silenced. So you're not gonna get the little dings and you're not gonna get the little you know, buzzes and a uh, little kind of signal things. So it's silencing your phone so that if you're in a meeting or something like that, you don't get disturbed, all right? And you can uh, move that once you're out of the meeting you can move that to the right. The orange is no longer showing. That tells you that you're not in silent mode. All right. And if, if you move it to silent, um, usually you'll get a, um, a little pop-up warning that says you're in silent mode. Uh, it just kind of pops up. It doesn't stay there, but it's letting you know that that's what you've done. All right. These are all true for the iPad too. You have the same buttons, Good. works the same way. Good, all right. So um, just some other kind of physical characteristics on your, on your camera lens, all right? And uh, th they look different uh, depending on, you know, the vintage, but there is a lens one thing that, um, and I think Ed noticed this once, is that takes a, take 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 a a couple seconds every now and then to wipe your camera lens. It's amazing how dirty it gets, and it happens over a period of time, so you don't always notice it. But um, Ed noticed that his his pictures seemed to be deteriorating. The quality <laughs> just wasn't as good as he remembered as when they were new. Um, you know, he bought two extra pairs of glasses. And, you know, <laughs> no, that's not true. But true. Um, <laughs> what, what, what happens is that lens gets dirty. And because it's actually such a high quality lens, you can act, it, it actually really degrades the quality of pictures that you can take. So just, you know, take one of those lint-free claws and wipe it every now and then. Um, there'll be a little white disc uh, there as well, and that's the light. And it's, it's good to kind of keep that clean as well. Um, and then there'll be a smaller dot in there, and that, believe it or not, is the sensor. And um, there's, there's the light, which is amazingly bright. Um, and we'll talk a little bit how you can use that for a flashlight or, or a signal light or whatever else you need to have. But uh, there's also a sensor and you want to make sure whatever case you have, sometimes this happens if you get, you know, a, uh, a knockoff case, is it will cover up one or more of those holes, either the sensor or the light. And you want to make sure the sensor is uncovered because that's the automatic focus. And that also um, will tell your camera when you have to use a flash or when you want to use a flash. And um, it also, um, if you've been in some of our earlier uh, sessions, the HDR uh, sensor is in there. And that is what helps the camera to improve the quality of the pictures that you're taking. So you may be able to take pictures, but the quality and, or the access to HDR um, won't, won't be there unless you make sure that that is is all uncovered okay how am i doing i'm not going too fast and no one's falling asleep i hope all right um so um up at the top obviously where you kind of listen there's there's a spe a small speaker in there um 
more importantly, on the bottom of your phone, if you look at the bottom of your phone, you're going to see the, um, the, the charging plug or the earphone plug in, in the uh, newer phones. The charging plug and the earphone plug are the same thing, right? They're the lightning. But some of you that have like the sixes, that I hear there was a six, and possibly is the, the sevens, they have a separate earphone plug and the charging plug. And um, it's a good idea to try to, you know, keep that clean. Uh, for what it's worth, that's where water can get in. So you just want to be careful about that. But you're going to find on either side of the plugs, there are these little holes. Hopefully, they're really little. Uh, that's actually your speaker for your phone. So if you want to hear what's coming from the phone better, kind of hold it like this in your direction. Yeah, I don't put it to your ear though, because it is really loud. <laughs> um, and um, and obviously, when you're using the phone, that's what you're doing. You're actually speaking into those speakers. So if you're using hands-free and you're talking on the phone, this is how you would hold your phone to to you know be able to have your speech heard best. And just a little a little side hack. If you're listening to music on your phone without your earphones, if you put your uh, phone into a bowl with the speakers downward, the bowl, the shape of the bowl will reflect the sound back out and it will actually enhance the sound coming out of your phone. It'll be less tinny. So take a bowl, just put your thing in there. When I, um, when I cook um, at at, I, I volunteer at the local soup kitchen. And um, when I'm cooking, I actually will put this up on a shelf with my phone in it. And uh, everyone who's kind of working with me can get to listen to my 1970s rock and roll soundtrack. <laughs> so, so those are the major um, kind of external uh, things about your, your iPhone. Jill, did you want to add anything to that relative to the iPad or? No, no, that's, uh, again, all that is uh, basically true of, uh, well, the speaker may be someplace else. Yeah, I'm not hmm. sure about the iPad. Yeah, I'm not seeing the little holes. So I think that's, that's just a little different, but nothing to worry about. Okay. So I think Ed, are you about to? Um, yes. Do, uh, do a share, and then we'll we'll go into the um, the settings so that people can kind of find out more about their 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 devices. Yep. And Chris, while I'm doing that, how about I've read about people who, because they carry their phone in their pocket, obviously, or a purse or or whatever get lint in that mm. power plug tell us what we shouldn't should and should not put in there trying to get lint out um so one way to avoid getting lint in there is i i put my phone into my front pocket and i i put it in upside down so that the um the lint if there's lint in my pocket, it's not getting pushed into the hole. So I put it in with with my uh, plug facing upward in my in, in, into my pocket. Um, you definitely don't want to jam anything metal. Um, you know, some people will try to you know use a um, paperclip uh, because what that's going to do is it's going to bend. Uh, there's as you can imagine, there's metal connectors in there. Um, when I've had to kind of fish something out, actually, um, if any of you have a, um, a small plastic crochet hook, that's a good way to get something out. Um, 
or a um, you know a toothpick you know that's not metal don't put metal in there because it, it will it can ruin the ruin the connection thank you Thanks. and there are some cases there are some cases that come with a little cover yeah mine does um, yeah yeah so that's that's not a bad way to go either yeah. i think the otter boxes is that i think that's one yeah. brand that that does that all right you're on okay can you can you see my phone i hope yes well, it just disappeared from my screen, but are you seeing it? We, yeah, yep. we've got it. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. Okay, well, we'll go ahead. So let's talk about, let's, uh, let's start with settings. And I'm going to just tap, just a, a, a couple quick things. We all have different devices, um, different versions of the iPhone and the iPad, and, um, and we have different iOS versions. So we've already seen in some instances what we're displaying looks a little bit different on your on your uh, device. So don't um, don't be worried about that. It it will be close enough. Okay. So you still can see my phone. Yep. Because I'm not seeing it. Okay. I'll just work off my phone then. I'm that's just a little disconcerting. But here we go. So I'm going to hit settings, and settings is the little a uh, gray circular um, thing on my on my phone. It's between zoom and camera, and I'm just going to tap that. And by the way, I've noticed in some of my classes in other times that people sometimes have a, like a a hard tap, a hard tap on it, or um, they hit it with a fingernail. Just you want to be real easy with the taps and the swipes and everything on this, but um, especially on the newer phones, there are there are different kinds of touches. There's a long touch if you hold it down a little bit. Um, you just need to kind of practice with that. Okay, so we're in settings. I'm gonna I'll ask for the last time. You can see that, Jill. Uh, we have not. Your screen did not go to settings. Okay, hold on. A we're minute. still seeing your home screen. Well, that's interesting. Hey, don't you love technology? Yep. Yes. So, do you want me? Do you want me to sign out and come back in on my phone, and then you can? Hold on, just let's, a minute. Let's try that. Well, well, Ed is working on that. Dee had a great question about sanitizing um, your device, and um, I would I would say that you know, like the alcohol wipes are good. What you don't want, don't use anything that's water based or kind of oily base so you know like um well obviously not water because water and technology is just evil uh, but you don't want anything oily based either because if that oil gets into any of your plugs or anything like that um that will reduce the contact that you that you that you, you know the electrical contact so alcohol is good and actually, people that um, are really concerned about sanitizing, what they'll do is th there are actually these ultraviolet um, containers that people put their devices into that will use ultraviolet light to sanitize. Um, I've been told they work. Um, I've never been that concerned because I'm the only one that touches my phone. So I'm just going to be contaminating myself. But to clean it, um, you know, just just alcohol wipes are pretty good. So thanks for that question, Dee. Yeah, that's a great question. Okay, Jill, I just connected one time and then I'm disconnecting. I'm going to try it one last time, and if this doesn't work, I'll let you connect. Okay. I, again, I'm still not seeing anything on the screen share. Oh. That's weird. And are you seeing it there? No, all we're seeing is um, has started screen sharing, but it, it's a black screen with the um, the little circle going okay. around. Okay. Do you mind trying then? Yeah. Okay. So off. what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave and come back in on my phone. So I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, well, Jill is doing that. Um, maybe what we can do is we can kind of set everyone up to check out their um 
their their settings. So if you don't know, oh look at that. There's an alcohol. I see an alcohol wipe coming out. She's <laughs> she's doing it. <laughs> oh, Anne is wiping my face too. I see that. Okay. So um, on your on your on your apps, the um, your settings is this little gear. All right. And so if you if you want to do this, just tap on the gear and that will take you to settings. All right. And this is not as good as uh, actual screen sharing. But once you get to settings. Hi, hi Jill. Welcome back. OK, do you want me to share my screen? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I just got them into settings. OK, and um, and then we can take it from there. Uh, just a quick note, by the way, welcome to Jim Carson, who joined us a number of minutes ago. Thanks, Jim, for being here. Uh, you're well, you're welcome. I'm uh, floundering here, but having fun. OK, we'll try to help you out as best we can. Are, are uh, Jim, are you on an iPhone or an iPad or both? Uh, I'm currently on an iPad. I started out on my laptop, which was kind of a disaster. Okay. And, uh, so, but I'm I'm on an iPad 11. Okay. Okay. So everything that we're talking about should be relevant to to your iPad. Yep. I've I've managed to stump, and I have an iPhone SE. Also. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. okay. And I'm a Microsoft user of 40 years duration and <laughs> just got this stuff and it's all confusing, man. Okay. There we go. You're yeah. in recover. You're in recovery. Right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe. <laughs> give give it a couple months and you'll be saying, why, why did I wait so long to get this stuff? All right. So all are right. you seeing yeah. my screen? Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. And um, I think. I think I don't think I've misled anyone. I've basically told them they should, if they want to follow along, to click on the the gear icon, and that would take them to settings. Yes, that's then, what. Yep. And so, um, Ed, do you want you want to take it from here? Sure. Yep. Well, okay. we'll all we'll all jump in. Um, so several things with settings. Um, Jill, why don't you tap on uh, settings is everything. Everything is in settings and there's lots of explanation about what each of the settings mean. You're not gonna learn all of this stuff at once. And there's just so much there, but it's really, really good to have at least a passing knowledge of, of how your settings work. Um, Jill, do you wanna just tap on your name? Yep. And Jill's tapping on her name, Jill Spencer, where it says Apple ID and iCloud and the rest. And this is a really good um, spot to, to know about um, because it has a number of, of important information. I'm not going to ask Jill to tap on each of those, but you can look at those. But Jill, if you don't mind opening up iCloud in particular. And look, oh my gosh, Jill is so good. She's only used a small portion of her her uh, iCloud storage, and you can see yes. that. Uh, do you ahead. notice? Go do ahead, you notice Jill. though that it's terabytes? That is not the free one. That I'm paying ten dollars a month to have that. <laughs> yeah. And would you say it's worth every penny, Jill? Well, it is because I am an Apple user for 20 years, and so I have a lot of stuff in iCloud. So I have upgraded. This is the third upgrade I've done. Yeah. For storage. Yeah. So you're you're paying ten dollars a month. I paid ninety nine cents. Well, let right. me show you. Yep. Yeah, but you're only getting gigabytes. Um, that's what I yeah. do, and I have I have two hundred gigabytes. gigabytes. Right, yeah. right, but uh, Jill is, is is terabytes. Yes, which is, so is huge. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, Not yet, you don't anyways. Need to. You don't need to. <laughs> so there, yeah, there are several different storage plans. Uh, the ninety-nine cent is the first one, I think, and then I I use the next one, which is two hundred megabytes, or gigabytes. And mine yeah. is just about full, so I'm going to have to go up. Chris, what do you have? 
I have I have the ninety nine cent ones here. I've just put my window up. See right there. Yeah. So you can see I I'm not close to terabytes yet. <laughs> yeah. So Jill, why don't you've got you've got your phone? Why don't you just go down through several of the things and settings? Um, I know that we want to talk about general and actually going back. Well, let's go out outside of iCloud and go back to under your name down at the bottom a little bit scroll down so that we can see the devices and talk oh my gosh jill has a million devices there oh i know but the, well um <laughs> i i just hang on to them i don't use them all <laughs> jill, jill do you want to why don't you just go into one of those if it's appropriate and show people the kind of information that they can see Okay, so uh, here's my phone. Uh, notice I've got find my phone on. Um, that's handy. Should I leave my phone somewhere and lose it? I can go to the find my iPhone app and it will locate my phone for me. And I also, um, if I've lost it or if it's been stolen, I can erase all the data. Um, from a dis, I can erase all the data through that app, which is good to have. Um, it shows you that my iCloud backup is on. It tells you the model iPhone 10. Tells me the version. This is the operating system. iOS stands for operating system, and that it's updated. Uh, it's got my number. It's got my serial number. And I always tell people it's probably smart to write that serial number somewhere else. So if something did happen to your phone and uh, you could and it was found, you could definitely identify it as yours. Um, I have no idea what IMEI stands for. Uh, but anyway, so that that kind of information is, uh, I think, helpful. And I don't know, you probably can't tell, but the way you navigate through settings is up in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a blue arrow and blue text, and that's like your back button. So now I'm back to settings. So let's go down, uh, Jill, you can, well, you can see um, airplane mode, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cellular, personal hotspot, those important things right up at the top. And then there are, are a number of other settings, as you can see. And Jill, shall we go into the general setting? Yep. And um, the about. That gives that same information. Right. But it also right. gives some additional. So you see that I have 15,000 photos. Um, and not a whole lot of music. Other people have a lot of music, which also takes up a lot of storage. It shows you how many applications I have. The 64 gigabytes, that's, that's my storage capacity on my phone itself. So when I buy a phone, I always buy, I, I think about what I can afford and I always get the most storage that I can afford. Um, to see, I only have about a third of it left. So I'm going to have to think about that. And it's got other specific information. Yeah. I, on, I'm on general, but I don't have all the information. It just says work about work. software update airdrop. It says all those. Oh, that's work. what so I tapped on about. Oh, you tapped on about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then Jill, why don't you go into software update, which is the next one. And that's, and that's a very important one because with any Apple device, it's really important to keep up to date. Yeah. It runs okay. better. They're, they're doing fixes all the time. And um, it just, it just will allow you to do the things you need to do on your device. Yeah, and so they do a lot of security updates there. Yeah. So it'll keep your keep your yeah. data safe. Right.
Now, here's yeah. here's an issue with, uh, and I'm talking about iPhone in particular right here. Right now, Jill's um, software is up to date, 14, iOS 14.4. Um, the um, that will if you have a device that is a 6s or newer that will um, allow you should be able to have iOS 14 which Jill has here if you have an uh, Apple an iPhone 6 just a 6 uh, that that is not supported um, we had somebody the other day who had a six and she couldn't figure out why she couldn't move up to uh, the latest software update. So you have to pay attention to that as the, as your phones age a little bit and decide, you know, do I hold on to them or is it important for me to be able to keep getting the latest software update? Um, Chris or Jill, anything else you want to say while we're in settings? There's a lot more. Jill, do you just want to scroll kind of slowly well, down through? Well, I'd like, to, I'd like, to, I think we ought to share iPhone storage. So I'm still oh, in general. Yes. Yep. And I'm back to the, where it says about software. You see where it's, whoops, that's not what I want. It says iPhone storage. And um, again, this is the storage right on my phone. And you can see that uh, I've used over half of it. And you can see that the purple is the media, which would be my pictures and videos. And that's using the biggest. But what is cool is see, it gives me recommendations. And uh, it says review large attachments. And if you look at this, I have a lot of videos that people have sent me via texting and I've never gone in and deleted them. Well, if I did, I would be creating more space on my phone because all those videos and pictures that people have sent me are um, taking up storage space. And so there's, you know, there's examples that shows you everything. So I've got things all the way back to 2020, you know, a year. So that's, that's something I need to do, and it's probably something we all need to do um, once in a while, is check the uh, recommendations. The other, it shows you your apps, and what I'm scrolling through is um, how much space they take. And so it's worth going through and deleting ones that you no longer use. So. I just retired from actually working with public schools as a consultant about a year and a half ago, but I have stuff on here, apps that I would have used with teachers, and I really don't need them anymore. So I need to go through and clean out. It's just like your file cabinet or your kitchen cabinets or your spice cabinet. Uh, things get out of date. And yeah. so it's worth going through and deleting. Right, and 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 some of that has to do with as your as your uh, storage gets filled up, uh, what what happens is there's a greater possibility of there being glitches, of you know things working slower. Uh, you know, it just starts to um, overtax your operating system. So you know, kind of shedding that extra weight, so to speak. Uh, will actually make your um, device work better. Yeah. So now M MBs are not megabytes, right? They're not so bad, right? They're the, the smaller ones, yeah. 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 So, so I don't have to be. I don't worry if they look big. Two hundred and forty-nine. Yeah. yeah. Eight MBs. And if and if you're using them, then you want them there. I mean, there's no. Yeah. Uh, question about that anything else ed you want me to open yeah what else do we want to do we want to look at um do you want to maybe. just accessibility maybe because there's so much in there i want to know about scam there's something about scam that i <clears throat> turned off because um i was trying to get my vaccine appointment so i turned it off but now i don't know where it is 
Oh, it, that might have been in phones. Phone, yeah. Phone. Um, you can, um, let's see. Silence unknown callers. See, mine's off right now. If if the caller is not in your contacts, if you have this turned on and the con and the uh, caller is not in your contacts, then it goes right to voicemail. Is that what you're talking about? I don't know. I don't know how to. Where's phone? I don't have phone. Yeah. Okay. So you're in settings and you're going to scroll down. It's quite a ways down. A mail, contacts, calendar, voice memos, phone. Okay, phone. Okay. Um. And then again, scrolling, and it says silence, unknown callers. Is that the one you're talking about? I guess. So what do you think? That's My question is, is that a good thing to do or not? It depends. From my point of view, it depends on who you have in your contacts like if your doctor's office is in your contacts and or other things that you might be expecting a call from if they're in your contacts it's not a problem but if like the vaccine you are waiting for the call back and they're not in your contacts and you would definitely want it turned off so that it came through immediately well that's what now, i did that's what yeah. i did and then i then i screened out somebody there was a volunteer, she was calling to give me an appointment and I didn't recognize her, her area code. So I screened her off for about three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and on so, mine, you know, I see it's off on mine, but I still, when a phone call comes in, if it's, they think it's a telemarketer or a scam possibility, that message still shows up on my screen. And uh, like you, I don't answer a phone number I don't recognize. But then I so gotta remember to go and look at voicemail. <laughs> so you you um, you don't silence unknown callers. I don't, but I have friends that do. Yeah, it really. I, there's, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Yeah. I think you need to think about what your particular situation is. Um, yes, this is Ed. And, you know, I I have that on and have had that on. I I almost never answer the phone. <laughs> I figure if it's important enough, they'll leave me a message and then I'll get back to them. Okay. Yeah. And, that, and that helps a little bit. Um, yeah. Jill, let's go down to, um, I, we need to take some, we need to take some questions. Maybe we should do that while we're in settings about any, any questions you have about settings, anything at all. Hearing none right now, and you can always ask. How about how about if we take a look at um, battery, just just for a minute, Jill? Okay. Because of that no, one setting. Yeah, I have to remember where it, there it is. So I'm at battery. And then the battery health. Battery. Yeah. Somebody oh, needs to mute. Yeah. Some, if everyone could mute, that would be great. There we go. I think. Um, yeah, I think there are two people. I think yeah. Henry and his wife were in the same yeah. room, and they get a feedback loop. So yeah. here's here's a very specific thing for you to take a look at, and the whole battery. Uh, charging issue and how often you should you plug in and that sort of thing is another whole class almost. Um, but um, the maximum capacity, your battery health is really important to take a look at every while. Um, I was surprised to find on my new phone that's only about 11 months old, I'm down to 85%. So that was, that meant to me that I was not paying attention. I, ha I was running some things in the background that I shouldn't have. Um, Jill's maximum capacity, her phone is much older, is, is older than mine, and she's still at 92%. I mean, it's still okay on mine, but it's a good thing to take a look at that every once in a while. Ed, what will you do then? What will you uh, change? Oh, I could replace the battery if it got, it'll tell me in here where it says under maximum capacity, if it gets to a certain point, it'll say, 
you better get a new battery. And that's I've I've replaced batteries before on my last phone. So, I mean, they shouldn't they shouldn't go out, but um, they get tired. They get tired. Yeah. I, I was because I was concerned about mine. I was doing some extra reading and research the other day and just thing just a couple simple things like when you put your phone down, put it down face down instead of face up. And that will that will help so that every time a notification comes through, it doesn't open up and make the the and have the screen light up. Oh, that's, I didn't know that. Uh, this is one difference with the iPad, so I'm just going to go back. The iPad does not have battery health. That's not one of the options. Mm, right. That's right. Yeah. Let's just take, Jill, let's just go to, let's go back out to your home page and let's show everybody where the control center is. And we'll talk about that just briefly and then we'll we'll take some other questions and, and show several other features on on both devices. Okay, so the control center, you want to go to the upper right hand corner and slide down on a diagonal. And you should get something that looks like this. It won't look exactly like this, but it should look something like this. And and the, yeah, go ahead, Jill. No, I'll, no, you go ahead. No, that's fine. I was just going to say that the control center is a specific spot that has a number of features or apps in one place. So you don't have to do a lot of hunting around. And you can see, for example, in the upper left hand corner, you've got a place to turn on and off airplane mode, what Jill just did with a little airplane signal. Um, you can turn, you can check the Wi-Fi there, whether it's on or not, and Bluetooth and your internet signal. Um, Jill, hit a couple of these others, and you can, you can add or delete the apps, take the apps off your control center by going into the, um, into settings under control center. And it's a very, very easy thing, just a, there's a plus or a minus to add these. Um, how did you, but how did you do that? I can't do that. Oh, what, yeah. Let's talk? let's go back to your home screen. Yeah. And then just top right hand corner. Wait, top right hand corner. Top yep. right hand corner. Just slide it down. On a diagonal. Yeah. Actually, no, I, I get the daily and NPR when I do that. Okay. Okay. Um, what phone do you have? Seven. You may... Seven. Okay. Slide up from the bottom. Oh, because you've still got a home button, don't you? You still have a home button? Oh, so you're yeah. Gonna, we'll slide up you're going to slide up from the bottom. Okay. Right. That's okay. right. That's right. Um, while we're here, just a couple of other things in terms of um, features. Um, well, let's let's stay in the control. Is everybody in control center? Can you see a control center on your device? You can get to it OK? Yes. Um, yeah. Every once in a while, when I first got my, my new phone 15 months ago, I called it my $700 flashlight uh, because, <laughs> because I, it seemed that the, the feature that I was using the most was the flashlight, of course. How many of you use your flashlight regularly on your phone? And Chris Toy, how do you, how do you access your flashlight? So uh, from your uh, from your control center, all you need to do is you just tap on the flashlight, and it's on. And uh, you know, a kind of a fun thing is if you tap and hold on that flashlight button, you can actually set the level how bright that flashlight is. And if you care, what happens is obviously the brighter the flashlight is, the more battery it uses and then lower um you can you know still see but um you know it'll last it'll last longer um when i'm out camping or something like that you can you know if you need to get up in the middle of the night or something like that you can use that flashlight 
uh, to kind of find your way around and, you know, shine it on the raccoons that are right. taking your food. Right. And I, I, I thought Chris was going to say how we accessed it. That's, that's one way you can access it. Siri likes to turn the flashlight on and off too. And when you've got your hands full of groceries and it's cold and you're fumbling for your keys, just say, hey, Siri, please turn on my flashlight. And she does, or he does. Yeah. Um, that's how I use it. Jill, talk about two or three other um, um, features or apps there on the control center that you particularly like. Okay, so um, one of them is kind of fun. You see this one that looks kind of like a, an S on its side? Uh, Apple has bought Spotify, which was a music app. And if a song is playing, you can tap there and it will identify the, so the song, which is kind of fun. Um, probably do not disturb the moon. If you have, um, you want to turn on do not disturb very quickly, you can do that. Uh, you just have to, and that keeps the phone from ringing. The vo it goes right to voicemail. Uh, and so you don't hear it. So that's kind of nice if, um, you sleep with your phone by your bed and you don't want to be woken up at three o'clock in the morning with a marketing goal. Um, but you just got to remember to turn it off in the, in the uh, morning when you get up. These sliders are helpful. So you see the little one that's a sun. I can slide in this controls. I don't know if you can tell on the screen or not, but this oh, controls, can't. okay, it controls the backlight and the lower it is, the less battery you use but my old eyes tend to like it uh, a little brighter and then there's the sound you can do the same thing you can control the sound the volume um, I'll be honest I don't use the control center very often I tend to use Siri <laughs> hmm. because Siri will do everything that any of these controls do and all you have to do is ask yeah and again, um, I yeah. What's I the stopped. one? What's the green one next to the airplane? Uh, that is. Oh, I always forget what that one is. I've got it turned on. That's your uh, cell. That's your cell. Cell. cell, 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 cell My server. cell. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But your calculator yep. is on here. Your your notes. Um, and a number of other things on there too. Yeah. So let's... Uh, the, oh, the magnifying glass is oh. kind of cool. Oh, yes. Uh, let me see. There it is. Uh, I, I use that with my failing eyesight. It's, it's very helpful sometimes. Yeah. Let's see. I don't have anything with small print. Yeah. OK, so well, there we go. Where... Yeah, I use it. I use it in expensive restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> where where is it? Where is it? Okay, I think we ought to um, let me get out of here. Where where does it? Uh, where is okay. the magnifying glass? Okay, so th it's the one with the plus sign. But if you don't have it, what you would do is go to settings, and then you would go to control center. Yeah, just get there. So. Control center. Yeah. And then when you get there, you can um, add different apps. So everything in red is already in my control center. Everything is green is th are things that I could add in addition. So if your magnifying is not showing up in your control center, you should go to settings control center and I'm guessing it's one of the green buttons and you just have to tap on it and it will go into your control center. Um, Jill, we're, we're past time. I just want to show two more quick things and then leave some time for questions if people don't mind staying for just a little bit. Would you go to um, just your home screen and just pull down from the top so we can see spotlight search? um that's not that's what happens when i pull down pull down from the middle 
There we go. There we go. So Jill just touched her iPhone or iPad on a home screen in the middle of the screen, and she just simply pulled down, and you see what's called Spotlight Search up here. I use that every, all the time. I don't hunt for apps. If I don't can't remember where the apps are on my home screen, I pull that down, or I can initiate an internet search right there. So try that again, just you're on a home screen, just a slight, put your finger on the middle of your screen and pull down and you see the spotlight search, very, very helpful. If you, if you put your finger further up and pull down, it's going to be about notifications. But that, that spotlight search is very, very uh, useful. Um, Jill, if you'd go back to the spotlight search just for a minute and just tap in T-I-P-S. And okay, everybody, see that when Jill typed in tips, there's a, a, an app that comes with your phone called tips. I don't use this enough, but I recommend it all the time. Jill, go ahead and, and it, that's the app right there. Open that up and it's simply short usable tips about all aspects of your iPhone or iPad, whatever device you're on. And it's very, very useful. If you want a good place to spend uh, 45 minutes or an hour every day learning about your device, you can't go wrong by just using all the ideas in tips. It would really teach you a lot. And, and there are things we, here that I never knew. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people don't even never never look at it, but it's very useful. It's like it's like the built-in manual that they used to send with with devices. Right. Um, Chris or Jill, anything else right now, or should we just take some questions? I, I, um, yeah, I would just add, and I'm sure you'll add it later, is that. Um, our our course includes more of more of these things in depth. Yes, it's a full course, not just a an hour session. But that being said, how about questions for Jill or Chris or myself? This is Elaine here. Can I take a video and record myself narrating at the same time, or do I have to take the video and then go back and record over it? Oh, so if I open my camera and go to, where is it? Well, why, why are we not seeing video? Maybe video won't show up on Zoom. It probably won't. Yeah. But when you take a, a video of yourself and, you know, you do the, <laughs> you do it so you've got the selfie, it will record as you uh, I mean, it will record your voice at the same time it's taking the video. So if I'm out pointing to my backyard and saying, oh, there is my uh, wild turkeys back in and I'm showing, showing the turkeys, um, it will also hear my voice. Does that answer your question? Okay, great, thank you. This is D. I'd like to know how long your courses are. Your oh, um, <clears throat> and we tell the because the adult ed people who are buying a lot of our classes in Maine, they ask the same question, and we say that the courses are about it would take you approximately uh, four weeks at a, an hour to two hours uh, a week. So probably eight to, t eight to 10 hours probably, but that's, I mean, that really depends on, on you too, Dee. And the nice- And the you nice, take it, you take it on your own. I mean, you, we, we just plug in. Yes, and look, no tests, no cramming. <laughs> it's just fun and you can go, you can go back, you can start and stop the videos. Like I do all the time on YouTube, it doesn't make sense, you just start and stop, so yeah. Yeah, it's it's done on your own. It's self-paced. 
Right. So once you pay for a class, do you finish it in four weeks and then you don't have access to it again? No, you've got it no. forever. Yeah. And and okay. the best, and D, the best part or worst part is you've got us forever too. Well, I'm gonna definitely take some classes. Okay, okay. And not to pressure you, but Chris will remind us that right now the courses are half price too. And oh, I definitely need to do it now. Yeah, yeah. So I have one more question, but I can't remember what it was. Um I've got one. Oh, your blog. Yes. Your blog. How often do you do that? Um, Jill should answer that because she does the majority of the writing for the blog, generally about once a week, actually. And I'm on your mailing list, so I would get that automatically. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. yep. That should show up in your mailbox automatically. Yes. Thanks for joining us today. This is Ed Brzee and my colleagues, Jill Spencer and Chris Toy. We appreciate your letting us know about how Boomer Tech Adventures courses and workshops helped you learn more about your iPhone, iPad, and Mac computer. If you like this workshop, you'll love our full introduction to iPhone Basics course, a fully self-paced course that will allow you to work at your own speed. The course is yours to use as long as you want, forever, and remember that you have us, Jill, Chris, and Ed, to ask if you have any questions along the way. This course is one of eight current courses we have with more in the works. As you can see, we have courses like Introduction to the Mac, Introduction to Zoom, several photography classes, and many more. We are available at several locations, as you can see, our website, YouTube, Facebook, and more. So please stay in touch. Thanks, and we'll see you in the next video.